I'm Holly Mitchell. I'm the founder of the Leadwell Network, and I'm talking to you today about the art and science of convincing. Now, learning how to convince people and to be a person of influence is one of the most powerful leadership skills you can possibly have. And especially in the context of dentistry, being able to talk to your patients about treatment and influence them to make choices that are good for their health is really, really important in being able to grow your practice profitably. Now, you could have the best solution in the world for them and put together a perfect treatment plan that solves all of their needs. But if you don't use their convincer strategy, if you don't deliver the information in the way that they need to receive it and in the period of time or number of times that they need to hear that information, it's going to fall on deaf ears. So let's learn about the science of convincing and how people need to be convinced. So if you think about your brain, the way you process information is through your five senses. Now, you're usually operating in a primary mode because there's too many bits of information coming into your brain at one time. It's going to filter out most of the things except for one primary mode. Now, most people experience things primarily visually or auditory or through their body kinesthetically. These are the sensory channels that we're going to focus on. They also experience information, data, through a number. So people have a secret number of times or a period of time that they need to hear information before they can make a decision to move forward. Now, the first people who are visual, let's talk about them. That's 55% of the population. And you'll notice that they're visual because they'll speak in visual language. I see what you mean. This looks familiar. If you're speaking in a visual language, that means you need to show, not tell. Use the tools that you have at your disposal, like your intraoral camera or, or your digital x-rays or your scanner. Use lots of visual aids, maybe models or visual metaphors. Speak to them, um, paint a picture that they can connect to. Uh, visual language is really, really important in being able to connect to these people. And how do you identify visual people? Well, listen to the stories that they tell you. Ask them about their experience at their last dental office. They'll often talk about the way things look or appeared or seemed to them. Or maybe they're talking about their recent vacation to Jamaica. Listen to how they describe the landscape the sunset, everything that they were seeing, how beautiful the architecture was. These are your visual people, and so you're gonna wanna make sure that when you talk to them about what treatment that they need, that you're using their language. The next type of people are auditory people. This is 30% of the population. They're going to say things like, I hear you, that sounds about right, or that rings a bell. You want to speak in their language by using auditory terms. Tell a story or use a video that has narration or music associated to it. That's going to click for those people. Have a conversation. The act of listening and receiving information auditorily is really gonna help this person process that information in the way that they need. You can tell examples or use things that make noise. You can clap your hands or snap your fingers or um, use some kind of uh, sound to help them understand. Now the next type of person is a kinesthetic person. So how do you notice these people? Well, when they're talking about that same trip to Jamaica, they're gonna talk about the way that they felt when they were there, their toes in the sand, um, how the food tasted. It's going to be a very physical representation of their experience. The same thing if you ask them, how, how was your last dental office? They're gonna talk about how it felt physically to be there. And so this is 15% of the population, and you're going to hear them say things like, I feel you, or um, I, ch I just knew it in my gut. They experience the world through their body, and so you want to help them experience the information that you have to share. 
So how do they experience it? Well, you could give them something physical to hold, like a model, or um, give them a task to do, something to perform so that they're physically engaging in the discussion. You can also use activity metaphors. You can use sports metaphors when you're describing treatment, or gardening, or cooking, or sculpting metaphors. Something that they can experience in their body as you're sharing the information. If you can let them try or touch something, you're going to get that patient super engaged. So now that we understand how people process the world and how to identify them by listening to the way that they speak about things, whether it's through their ears or through their eyes or through their body, now we need to identify the number of times someone needs to hear information in order to be convinced. So if they're a visual person, they might talk about how many online reviews they need to read in order to decide whether they're going to choose a dental office or go to a new restaurant. So how would you figure out an auditory's person number? Well, you could find out how many times they need to hear a movie's good before they're interested in seeing it. Or if you're thinking about yourself, maybe you guess that you're a kinesthetic person. How many cars do you need to test drive before you know that this is the right one? Or how many apartments do you need to stand in before it feels just right? Listen for that number. Maybe you can ask a person, how did you go about deciding whether our office is the right one? They might tell you, two friends of mine mentioned and I looked up your online reviews. So you're hearing that they heard some information about your practice twice and then how many reviews did they check? Maybe it was a ton of reviews so they needed a lot of information. They needed to hear that information multiple times. Or maybe it was just one friend who mentioned how good it felt in your office. That's a kinesthetic person who needs to hear something just once. Now those are the automatic people. These are the people you're gonna to wanna to do same day dentistry with because they are the quick starts, they are the impulse buyers. When they hear something, see something, or experience something just one time, as long as it's in that right sensory mode for them, they're gonna jump on it and they're gonna to wanna to move forward. But the majority of people are a number of times person and the most common number is three. So they need to either see it three times, hear it three times, or experience it three times. This is why in your case presentation, it's really, really important to show and tell things in a variety of ways, summarizing at the top and at the bottom of the case presentation what you're sharing with them. And if you've hit it three times, you're way more likely to get that person that day to move forward. If you only hit it once, it might take them three recalls to hear that information before they're ready to move forward. Now the next group of people is a period of time people. These are the ones that have to sit on a decision for a week or two weeks or two months before they're ready to move forward. Now sometimes they're not ready to move forward that day, but if you've got systems in your office to follow up with treatment that hasn't been scheduled yet, it might be twice over a period of two weeks. It might be three months before that person is ready to move forward. Sometimes it depends on the amount of money too. That length of time may, may lengthen even longer if it's going to be quite a large treatment plan. But remain persistent because if they are a period of time person, once that time has passed, they're ready to pull the trigger. The last group of people is about 15%. Now these are the people who if they didn't come in wanting the service, they're probably not going to say yes to it. They're the unconvinced parties. But as long as you main, remain consistent when you're talking about a night guard, eventually they'll come around as long as you keep allowing them to see, hear, and experience why it's going to benefit them and what the risks are of not moving forward. So how can you take these tips and improve your case acceptance and your ability to convince people? Well, I'd recommend watching or listening to this recording at least three times because I know the majority of you will gather that information and be willing to try it out for yourself.
Now, if you're a kinesthetic person, go ahead and experiment. Try it on three patients, because I know for the majority of you with, that are kinesthetics, that's going to be the thing that's going to help you develop this new habit. Now, automatics, automatic patients, it's important to note that one in 12 will say yes if you ask them, would you like us to start that for you today to save you a visit? Now, one in 12 times, make sure you're offering that every time because that's really going to grow your practice through same-day dentistry. The number of times people make sure you're telling, showing, or involving them at least three different ways. If you do that every case presentation every time, 52% of people will move forward. Just make sure you don't spread them out over three recalls. And then for the period of time people, make sure that you schedule that follow-up visit if they need more time to think about it or to bring their spouse along with them so that they can help them move forward with that decision. And if they're not willing to schedule a second follow-up visit, make sure you've got systems in place to reach out to them over that period of time that they need to decide. And the last people, just make sure that you stay consistent. The unconvincers, eventually something will motivate them, whether it be pain or maybe they're just, they wake up one morning and they're ready. But whenever they're ready, keep that door open. We're here for you and you'll get them in the end.